Your customer's brain is often seconds away from smashing their phone when they're visiting your website. You think it's exaggerated, but no. That's the reality of 2025. Mobile is 90% of traffic for most websites nowadays. Yet over 90% of mobile landing pages are extremely frustrating for the users. It's all about making the gap between mobile visits and mobile sales a lot smaller. Because that's gonna bring you a lot more money. There are five common mistakes that nearly everybody makes and we're gonna break them down today. The fifth one can possibly cost you up to 50% of mobile conversions. There is also a bonus tip at the end on how to handle mobile onboarding because I see that almost everybody does it wrong and you don't really need to lose those users. You can keep them, you know? To fully understand mobile, we need to take a step back and understand the desktop first. It doesn't matter if it only gets 10% of the views. We're gonna be working on a specific example today, so let's click the button and make a website. Alright, looks good. To better understand what we're gonna do on the mobile, we need to define all the elements. The essential part of a good hero section is the headline. Then we add the ratings as a type of social proof. And as a second kind of social proof, we can show how many businesses are already using the platform and how many client issues is the algorithm solving. In the key visual, it's good to show a user problem, like some of the paid features are not working. Under the headline, we can add a description to clarify what the tool actually does. We can also add little elements in the key visual to show how the client problem is being solved in real time. The most important part of any landing page is the CTA. So in this case, we're gonna go for extremely low friction action and it's gonna just say try for free. And let's not forget that most customers resonate well with seeing other humans, so we add the person in there for human touch. But it's not completely necessary, in some cases you can just show how the app is actually working. But make sure to keep it rather simple, nobody has the time to decipher complex images. So for most of this breakdown I'm gonna stick with the person being the key visual. There's one other type of social proof that's sometimes below the fold and you have to scroll to it. Which is the logos of the companies that are using it. And this is a good way to build extra trust. Okay, now it's finally time to get to mobile. I'll tell you why we always design mobile last and why I believe that mobile needs to be its very own experience. It gets even more tricky when we get to mobile. Let's take a classic left-right content website like this. Transforming it for mobile means splitting the left and the right blocks and placing one under the other. You make some stuff smaller so it fits and wow, your website is now responsive. Ready to tackle all that new traffic? No! Stacking some blocks under other blocks is irresponsible, not responsive. This is a disaster. But here is a set of five solutions. I'll also show you a unique principle that we're A-B testing right now on multiple sites and it has pretty promising results. Let's get those five points out of the way first and then I'll tell you all about it. When faced with much less screen space, you decide to cram everything in there anyway. Yeah, good job. You end up with a very dense, complex and visually heavy hero section. On mobile, you naturally have less white space, which means the hierarchy is not as clear anymore, everything takes much longer to process. This makes the user really tired. Unless they're already willing to buy, they likely quit a visually heavy site like this. That's because our brain naturally hates being overloaded. So when it looks at something complex like this, it gets tired and tells us this is not what we were looking for. Animations. Uh, we've seen so many beautiful transitions and animations of the hero sections out there. And most people think that, hey, I want that too. But that can be pretty damaging to your brand, especially on mobile. Another big thing is all the buttons and all the little visuals in the hero section. Some call them social proof icons, but yeah, are they really? There is an extra added anxiety when things on mobile are too small to comfortably tap. 
obviously that starts with the CTA button. It has to be big enough so you can easily tap it, but it can't be too big because that could cause something called banner blindness when it looks too close to an advertisement and then our brains automatically skips it. For desktops, we usually go between 48 and 52 pixels high, but then on the mobile, we almost always go above 52, but under 64. If your extra social proof icons are too small to be readable, skip them on mobile. Number four, up inside a phone, inside a phone. That sounds like a bit much, doesn't it? Showing complex SaaS apps in your hero section is generally not a great idea because nobody is able to quickly discern what they do and it's a very complex and heavy overloading element. But on mobile, it can get even more silly if you show a mobile app inside of a mobile app that kind of creates this weird inception-like feeling. Instead, show what problem you're solving. This can be a simple element from the app or a simple pop-up or window. Number five, exact same copy as on desktop. Why do copywriting twice if you can do it just once, right? Mm -mm. Less space, but on a smaller screen actually means that you should be going for much bigger text, not smaller. You need to simplify every object and remove anything that is not essential. In many cases, we simply rewrite the copy for mobile separately. And when it comes to the CTA, you also need to consider how easy it's gonna be for people on a mobile phone to try out a platform like this, even if it's free. In this case, it might be better to change the button to something like show how it works. You know, something with a little less friction. And the copy also needs to be matching the platform. If you use the word click on the desktop, make sure to use the word tap on mobile. And you know what? There is a bonus one. Let's talk about sticky elements. Yeah. It's really essential on mobile to not to take up too much vertical real estate. You might not need the company logo or in many cases even the menu to stay as you scroll on the top of the page all the time. Scrolling on mobile is pretty fast and they can scroll back to the top if they want to or you can add a little overlay button at the bottom to help them scroll to the top. So yeah, both figuratively and literally avoid sticky stuff on your mobile phone. Now let's talk about user onboarding. If you have any kind of registration screens, consider simplifying it for mobile. Less fields and shorter forms. Even just enter your email and get a magic link right on the phone. That also confirms your email automatically so you have no need to reconfirm it. Then you can set the password later if you want or on the desktop. Remember tip three, the sizes of stuff? Well, checkboxes in forms are also like that. Make them huge, 32 by 32 at least. That removes a lot of anxiety from tapping. If your form has more than two fields on a mobile device, you will likely get a very big conversion drop. It's best to convert those users first and then ask them all the other stuff later. Avoid toggles on mobile devices unless you are fully aware of what they do. Toggles are not the same thing as checkboxes. Now let's combine all of this together. The general rule is make the process as short as possible. Remove all the distractions, all the friction and anything that is not completely necessary. If they like the product, they will fill all the extra informations in their profile section later. You don't need to ask them everything up front. Okay, it's time to talk about the mysterious technique that we're testing right now. What it is, is micro-visuals for the mobile landing page while having full-on visuals on the desktop. The idea is that it saves you a lot of space for the buttons and the copy and makes it more functional. Normally, you'd have to scroll down to get to some hero image, unless you put the hero image at the top on the mobile. But then, uh, yeah, that's a very bad idea either way. You want the headline and the button at the top, but then normally most people scroll down to get to some kind of hero image. But usually the headline and the buttons are already out of sight, so they don't really connect with that visual anymore, and that makes the visual pretty redundant on the phone. So in most cases, you can just skip it. Instead, make the next section on the phone part of your clearing doubts strategy. I talk a lot about it in my newsletter at malevichmethod.com. 
Link in the description. Go check it out if you haven't. Of course, mobile requires testing, tweaking, iterations. And testing it on the actual phone, not just shrinking your browser window on the desktop. Testing it at night. Testing it at bright sunlight testing it on Android and testing it on iOS. But long story short, make sure to have big type, big buttons, big controls and remove all the distractions. Animations, scroll hijacks and decorations will likely just annoy your users. You don't want that. Because on mobile it's even easier for them to switch away to something completely different and forget about your brand forever. If you like the video smash the like button and make sure to subscribe if you haven't. It helps me in a big way if you leave a comment under the video telling me about which of the principles you like the most. You can also check out how we design professional products at squareblack.com and how I'm teaching over 20,000 people on the proper conversion techniques and website design on Square One. And that's it for today. You go on and have a beautiful day.